pretend it's funny, you yeah? know? One, two, three. Oh! Yeah. The laugh is hard to hear on a picture. Um, so I have uh, 44 slides for you, I guess, and we have 20 minutes, so um, I have to speed up at some point uh, in my presentation. Uh, I think I have the most rare sneaker from all of us here. It's a Nike. I bought them on the sneakers app. You saw it on the presentation, and I was working for, the, I don't know, seven years, so I ramped up a lot of countries there in 2012, so maybe that's why I'm here as third speaker. Um, but maybe also because we heard a lot about uh, brands like Nike, Zalando, and uh, what they think, how the future will be, how we go through the crisis. Um, I have the how we go through the crisis because um, I'm working in travel. Omeo is a um, travel company, and we had the crisis two years ago, so I know exactly um, how e-commerce kind of uh, feels maybe at the moment and uh, what are things we can do to... Um, go through the crisis together. Uh, so I, I don't have a marketing presentation here today, so I don't present Omeo. Only three slides. My Corpcom team wants that, yes. Uh, everything else are tools. So you need uh, a mobile phone, a pencil or something, because some things are not on the slides, but quite valuable for you. And I also want to win, of course, the speaker thing, so I have a voucher for you guys, yeah? Um, so every tool you see, you, you just uh, mention Norman20 and you get a 20% discount of everything that's on here. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Did this in a night action on LinkedIn for you? <laughs> ah, okay. So vouchers still work. Yeah, David, so uh, that's how I did my uh, shows once when I was at Zalando. We always had the Zalando vouchers, like real value vouchers work great. So first vouchers for Omeo, of course, Norman 20. Um, I need the thing and then let's go. Um, so... Uh, I have some tools here, yeah? Uh, since two and a half years, I'm testing a lot of tools that make, uh, make us more efficient uh, because when you have to release 30% of the people and your budget is at zero, then you get into big problems, and that's what we had in travel. Uh, in um, April 22, 6th of April, 96% of our revenues broke down, and although we are a 400 million euro invested company, um, we had three weeks to live. Yeah? So that's the story I have for you. How uh, can tools uh, help you to uh, be way more efficient. You have to write them down. Yeah, that's for you guys. Yeah, The Nike guys, that's how I wake up Wednesday morning at 9. This is how efficient they do their content and their delivery to the customer. That's when I buy usually my shoes. That's a long way to get to this efficiency level. Uh, for day, I have three slides for you. What is Omeo? Um, uh, how the way of work changed in the last two and a half years through pandemic, quite hard for us. I think this will continue. How can you be more efficient in meetings, in plannings, and so on? Then, uh, uh, then we are efficient in the meetings, um, but how do we and, um, get our customers better to know uh, without paying a lot of uh, uh, market research money? Now, I found two tools, maybe they help you, maybe not, you have to uh, check. And I think they even delivered some creation data for me <laughs> yesterday night. I haven't seen them, so it's first time for all of us seeing some slides here. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, and the last thing is the, the outlook <laughs> where, yeah, no, it's a joke game. Nah. Um, and the last thing is uh, how to produce content at scale and where I think content goes. Yeah, Because I think 2012, 13, 14, I was the biggest content producer in fashion in Europe. I think we bought 150,000 manual written uh, text and, uh, for uh, not only products but also categories for, I think, seven languages for Zalando once. Um, so from that time on... Um, I'm doing it a bit different nowadays. Yeah, maybe that uh, helps you. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, we can do it also interactive. That's said for the first row. The other ones are safe there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, you can read this later. Yeah. Uh, um, hey, that's a, that changed by the way. Um, so we uh, Omeo is um, now 10 years old. We sell ground transport tickets, so we are sustainable by product. Everything we sell is uh, tickets for trains and buses in Central Europe, America, North America, uh, Canada, and so on. Um, and every long distance train runs on green electricity in Europe. That's quite great. Yeah, we operate in 30 uh, countries with uh, 60 domains and obviously 30, uh, um, uh, 60 apps, 30 domains. Uh, APEC, uh, whatever you can imagine. Yeah. So before you go on your uh, um, trip with a booking, you need a train, 
Omeo does it. But Omeo is usually not for the locals because the locals know their train provider. But if you go to another uh, country, you don't know the train provider. Who knows the German main train provider? Three, Deutsche Bahn, four, five, six. Six out of 400, so that's great. And the French train provider? Was it TGV? SNCF? Uh, yeah, so you, you see um, it's quite rare. I would say 2 to 3% of the people know the train providers. That's why they need an app to um, travel. And that's our business model, which uh, works quite great at the moment. Um, we have uh, 300 employees in um, Australia, London, Prague, Berlin, mainly Berlin, um, and quite a big funding round. And the interesting thing, we got the last funding round during pandemic. So when every uh, travel company in the world uh, struggled, Goldman Sachs thought uh, maybe we are a good business model here and will survive it. So lucky. That's why I'm here. Uh, so uh, during that time, uh, our way of work changed. Yeah. So we have now. I think the HR persons here call it new work. Everyone heard of new work? Just pretend. Um, uh, we have uh, quite flexible working times. Uh, uh, I call it office quality time. Yeah. So whenever I bring people back to the office, uh, we have a speaker every Wednesday. We have external guests. We have lunch for the teams and so on. So um, we try to make it as convenient to get them all back into the office. Yeah. Some companies just say 50-50. We're 50% at home on it. I think that's that's not the best approach. Uh, we are agile. Leadership changed. So people change more often the jobs. Um, uh, planning changed. Yeah, everybody uses OKRs, I guess, or something like that, or or uh, yearly roadmaps or, or something, um, and a higher transparency. Uh, I picked out one of them. Um, uh, the first, the meeting point. So we have hybrid meetings, uh, meeting people working from home, from uh, from everywhere. How do you how do you make your meetings more efficient? Yeah, um, that's the old structure of meetings. You look. Oh, it's in German. Oh, wow. Uh, the one thing. Uh, so you have meetings every day. Like, who has daily stand-ups still? Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So there are some tech guys here. Yeah. Also, yeah. Uh, uh, I think it's okay to have daily stand-ups. Yeah, I think you can also do it uh, every three days or something. Um, then you have your team meetings, update meetings, and so on. So the to cluster your meetings in the frequency. Does it make sense? Is that like really the the logic behind it? Um, um, when the pandemic started, I thought uh, maybe no. Uh, so. I change, uh, cut it down to three types of meetings. Um, so you have um, you have update meetings when when it's a monolog, someone tells you something or you tell someone something. Yeah, Monday's the numbers, um, uh, project updates, product updates, whatever it is. You have planning meetings, and I call it CIC meetings. That's the first thing maybe you can think about and write down. It's called create, innovate, collaborate meetings. Every meeting there's also studies that need in-person. Um, in-person discussion, so things you cannot do remote well. Yeah, so these type of meetings, if you cluster them out of your uh, structure, you can build such a matrix. That's from one of Malik or some marketing guy. Just copied the the, the template, but reused it. You can cluster your meetings into meetings that are better in person and better in um, in remote. So you will see the meeting have two, three, eight. Yeah. So every meeting that is more around create, innovate, collaborate. It's much more efficient if you do it in the office. Yeah, so that was the first thing we did. We erased all meetings in January two years ago um, uh, um, and clustered them not like in what's daily, weekly, and so on, but clustered them into the topics they, they you do in the meetings and which ones are better you can do from home, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and which ones are the ones you uh, have to do um, in person uh, in the office. So that helps us in this hybrid world now to be much more efficient in the meetings. Makes sense? Yeah? Okay. First one, I will go ahead. Of course, that's what the team said. Now the best meeting is no meeting. Uh. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I I found a tool. I, uh, uh, it's for free actually, so you don't even need the Norman Twenty, by the way. <laughs> in, yeah, still. Uh, um, this uh, the tool solves different problems. So first of all, you're you're sitting in the meeting. Usually, goal is not defined. You, um, agenda is not visible in first space. Um, oh, uh, wrap up in the last 10 minutes is not happening. So all the things you can read and learn and whatever in, in books yeah, uh, are usually not happening. Um, so again, I'm not there. You run over time. And uh, yeah, the first one, you see, I didn't do the slide. Some people say Norman speaks too much. Um, so uh, you can. Uh, there are tools that can limit the speaking time in, in meetings. You know? And so the one uh, I use at the moment heavily is verbally. That's what you have to write down now, verbally. 
uh, uh, verbally shows the agenda in the meeting. So you don't open like someone uh, uh, or there's a new uh, uh, meeting lead goes into some Word doc, opens the agenda and, and shares the screen and all these things you can just erase all of this inefficiency, yeah? Just get one, two percent of the whole meeting time back uh, um, because it's automatically pulled off from the cal calendar, shows you the agenda, uh, shows how long the topic is, if you put the minutes behind, also has a timer behind each topic. So if you have, if you have normal two minutes, then the timer tells you when the two minutes are over. Yeah, so uh, in a stand-up, when you have everybody uh, speaking one minute, yeah, then um, everybody has one minute, and then the timer in the middle is over, and the next one uh, comes up. So we have time boxing, GDPR conform is clear, speaker timer, the icebreaker is quite funny. At the, uh, yeah, depends on the meeting. Yeah, maybe maybe not with your with your founder, but uh, all the other teams like it. <laughs> uh, no installation, so it's done in one minute. You just invite an email address to the calendar entry. Done. Okay. Two number one, meeting efficiency improved. Thank me later. Uh, that's how it looks when I speak, yeah? So over the time, people get angry. Um, or what's the outlook with meeting analytics? Uh, so we are forced to be more efficient. We have less budget, yeah? Uh, we know the economic crisis, all that comes up now. Uh, I'm through it already. What these tools can do in the future, they can also um, uh, improve the quality of the meetings because they they see when someone is not speaking but should speak. Yeah, they can measure when someone has too much fill words. Yeah, they can they can uh, they can for you as a team lead, for example, give you an advice um, when someone is maybe or when the meeting is always too long or too short. Yeah, so you you after six months you personally don't realize it anymore, but you see the meeting is always 50 minutes shorter than planned. Cut it off. Yeah. Um, so good things. I'm not sure if you have to ca scan the QR code. Website is there. That's it with the tool. Good. Next one. Mm. Understand your customer much better. Uh, who of you paid a lot for market research? Yeah, in the last two three years, market research is expensive. I'm not sure that that looks. You're not so engaged with market research. You just do without market research. Okay. Um, why understand the customer? I thought that was a Nike to understand the customer better. Now, yeah. Um, so uh, I remember at uh, Zalando Times in 2012, we paid 100k just to investigate like some country and what are the audience there is. Uh, at Omi, we paid 40k. Um, I found a tool that does it for 4k, you know, um, and you can probably do even less in there. Uh, so. Two tools. First one, very basic, Apinio. Write it down. I only have one side. I don't explain it. You go on the tool, you ask a question on the market, and there's a panel behind that answers it. It's really cheap. It's a tenth of what you would usually pay for these kind of uh, tools. So if you want to go through the crisis, still exploring new markets, Apinio is one tool. It's also fast. You get answers in two, three days, and don't wait for Gartner um, uh, the next two months or so. Deliver something. Yeah, or Nielsen. Or hopefully no market researchers here. I'm sorry. Mm. Second one, my favorite one, not because it says Nielsen on the left side, uh, they're also too expensive, no. Um, this is classic market research, right? Survey data, there was a survey done every three quarter, uh, every quarter, every, uh, um, every three months, you have uh, some new data and they pull it out, uh, Gartner, you, you know them all basically, yeah? Uh, Statista, GFK, and so on. That's similar to what Apinio does, but much cheaper and on your exact question. Uh, but what would be if you can uh, not ask the customer some question or a panel something, which is always biased. If someone asked me, do you like Nike shoes? Yeah, what's the answer? No, or ask anyone in this room after the presentation who likes Nike, yes. Yeah, so the bias uh, is always when you ask people. So what about observing people? And that's what Raskas does. I know the name is difficult. Yeah, Raskas, it's I think a curve in Monaco or so. Um, they, they found, do I have a slide on that? No. Um, they have uh, they, they they have a system. They have an ABI system. They co they're connected to 80 pages, like the Facebook ABI, um, uh, um, Wikipedia, whatever you can imagine. There's a skip slide if you really want to see which uh, sources they use. Um, and this is uh, how they check if someone has an affinity or likes something or gives a pro or negative comment on something. Normalizes this over all platforms and knows exactly what people like, dislike. Uh, uh, if they are really sustainable or if they just pretend to. So you observe people rather than asking them. So um, you can much cheaper than in the, in the, in the past get to, uh, get to understand your audience much better. Yeah? Um, 
That's what they sent me for you guys here. Oh, no, that's for Nike and Zalando, guys. That's for you there. Yeah, so you see exactly uh, without any big costs in the tool um, that the, uh, here, the Zalando audience is much more interested in luxury than Nike, for example. Obvious, but measured on real user behavior. Yeah, that's actually what you had in the first presentation. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, so um, one of the founders is half Croatian, by the way, I'm just saying so. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, Nike versus Zalando, and then there is, understand the creation market, what's that, like the affinities. Now you see exactly the affinities per market, you can see it per city and you can see it per zip code. If there is someone likes Louis Vuitton, the, wow, Prada, wh whatever. So you all kind of data inside the tool without uh, asking Gartner 40k for something. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Cryptocurrency in Croatia is going down, I think that's no news here. Wow, five minutes. Oh, <laughs> that's how they do it. Um, and that's what we skip. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, new, also interesting for you, it's since last week something. When was the second last week? Uh, they have a directory, so you don't even have to ask questions in there. It's, uh, it's an even cheaper version. All their data they already analyzed for some market, like Croatia, they have already a directory. So they save the data, so you just go in there and you can see, oh yeah, Malaysian Airlines has a high affinity um, in Croatia for my target group, for my brand, for Nike, whatever. You can connect all items in there. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Okay? Cool. Uh, so we come to the synthetic age. Now we, uh, we, under, we have efficient meetings. Yeah? We do better planning. Uh, we understand our customer better, all on a, on a very cheap crisis uh, uh, proven uh, baseline. Uh, um, now interesting for you, Nice to hear that content is important, but how do you get to content at some point, yeah? Uh, and the content fu uh, future for me looks like, like this. You have to be personalized, that's clear, yeah? Personalized, that's the shoe example from the beginning. Uh, you have to be uh, relevant on every device, also on, uh, on, your, on your watch, on your voice thing, even on out of home screens if needed, yeah? Uh, so that's the future, uh, it's, it's fast, you need it scalable, you need it in all kind of languages. And the other dimension on content is you have, on the one hand, very uh, extraordinary user-generated content. Yeah? So content that um, Amazon reviews. Yeah? So reviews, real person reviews. So how do you generate reviews at the moment? Um, either you, who's faking reviews? No, I'm joking. Yeah. Uh, you can fake reviews, of course. I think Amazon doesn't like it. Yeah. Uh, also, probably you <laughs> some of you are fake for sure. Um, uh, but you. Um, um, there are tools how you can generate us real user-generated reviews quite on a, um, uh, on a very low budget nowadays. So that's the one thing, real uh, user value. In the middle you have uh, natural language generated content or rule-based generated content, especially the affiliates here. You, know, you have 20 data points, put an NLG on top and you get text out of it. Yeah? Anyone has experience with it or works kind of this way already? Um, <clears throat> Okay, three tools. I don't have them in the slides here, so you have to write them down if someone is interested in it. <clears throat> the first one is Rosa Energy. Rosa Energy is open source. Put data points in, get text out in a lot of languages. Rosa Energy. Um, second one is uh, AX Semantics. They do it paid. And Retresco is the last one. Yeah, these, I tested these three. We're working uh, um, in-house at the moment. So if you have data points, if you're an affiliate, probably look into energy if you want to scale. Yeah? Um, and the last one is uh, just a hip topic uh, we're testing since uh, beginning of the year, the synthetic age. You heard this? I really like the word. It's, it's happening everywhere. So you can synthetically create everything, pictures, videos, and so on. So this is where content will end in some years, I guess. So as we have only very limited time, what's the most important thing for you guys? I think in crisis times, actually, it's pricing and recommendations. Yeah? This is a study here. There's a link in the in the comments if, uh, if you want to check it out where it comes from. So um, some company asked like, what is really important if you want to do your, your purchase? Probably yeah, if you have more, um, more products or more, um, more things to evaluate, reviews are a bit more important than brand and convenience. Um, still, I think pricing, because the study was done, I don't know, like half a year ago, I think now pricing is more important here. Um, so, in general, it's reviews, but how do you generate reviews? Yeah, put your own CRM team on it, yeah, uh, wait some months and maybe you get some reviews out, you have to structure it. Mm, or there's a new provider, actually it's live since, I don't know, like some two, three months or so, 
Um, I'm, some, I'm in two test groups there. It's quite interesting. They have an app. Uh, in the app, they, they get customers in, and the customers, only if they send uh, um, um, pictures from the product with them or the service they use, like a train they use to Amsterdam or um, Air Jordan 13, a picture, um, then, they can, uh, then they can review the article, write the review. You, ch um, you say uh, uh, um, what you want to have as answer, the pros, the cons, the costs, anything that's remarkable on the product. Then you get your review, um, and then you have these reviews uh, instantly, basically. So with growing user base, you can have, yeah, I'll put that one in for you, you have, uh, um, you have reviews, but not waiting for to have a Levi's 501 on your affiliate site reviewed 20 times uh, until end of year, but you have it the next day, or depending on, of course, the product and how many people have it in the in the base there. But you can speed up at a at a, um, at a very low budget here. I think the company is called. There I have it. That's really sad. It's even in German hard to read. See menu. Um, and now we have only one minute left. Guess who's that? Yeah, um, it's an artificial picture uh, I did in two minutes yesterday just for you guys. Yeah, so uh, uh, you see the head there. Something is something is kind of strange. The right arm is bigger. Yeah, but um, uh, that's how advanced it is. Now, for me personally, I did this personally in I don't know mid journey or so. Um, you can create everything you want, license free. Yeah, no cost. Yeah, uh, if you have high picture cost, think about how you can uh, work with uh, one of these. AI tools in the future to create way more content. It, it's not stopping at pictures, by the way. Yeah, uh, use Jasper AI. It's called Jasper. The, the, um, in English, it works perfect. I cannot uh, differentiate between a man-written and machine-written content anymore. This was beginning of the year different, right? You all remember? Yeah. Um, so with um, uh, uh, Jasper AI, for example, there's also a phrase. You can create content. Um, this is now from... This is made with Mid Journey, yeah. So also write it down. Guess what? Which one of these pictures are, is the only real one? Yeah. Yeah, none. <laughs> yeah, it's all fake. <laughs> uh, so you can create. Uh, uh, it's a. Ver it's quite easy, guys. I tell you, I can do it personally. So it must be easy. Um, to create pictures for your business um, uh, and scale your business, it doesn't stop at pictures. You can also do the same with uh, storylines. Yeah. So there's a there's a sheet where you just put in, hey, I want a story with a with a small uh, with a with a magician and so on. And then the AI fully delivers the storyboard, the pictures, and everything. Yeah. Free at the moment. Free. Let's make it happen. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, ladies and gentlemen, do we have the questions? Yes, we do. Uh, we ask uh, Norman, who Only is funny your things. who is your biggest uh, competitor? Um, we, at the moment, we have no real competitor. Trainline is good in trains, but we have ferries, bus, and flights as well. So, on ground transport. Um, now, yeah, after crisis, there are only two on the market left, and uh, we are there. So, yeah, lucky shot. But Trainline also operates a lot of trains in UK and uh, uh, not operates but sells tickets. So, yeah. So, which form of transport people use the most? We have the mobility report live on our page. It's also covered, I think, from um, New York Times. Uh, uh, it shows that um, the people started switching to trains uh, um, after the pandemic began and then it slowly uh, got back. So, flights are slightly uh, back now. Of course, we operate ground transport and that's what. Um, the sustainability basically is built in for us, so that's where we're focusing on. I have to mention that Croatia is proudly uh, holds the title for the slowest trains in Europe, so I think it's happening. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah um, I mean, if someone is uh, doing any uh, travel affiliate, just uh, write me. Yeah, um, uh, I'm happy, or if you have connection to the uh, rail, uh, national rail station here, uh, happy to connect to Croatia also. Yeah, we, yeah? Saw me up. we have 1,000 <laughs> providers, so 1,001 is waiting. Um, what percentage of revenue represents collaboration with Uber? <laughs> yeah, great, guys. Um, so someone read the news, yeah. Um, um, I have to ask my corporate communications team on that. It's um, obviously uh, not a public figure. No. Okay. Um, yeah, and we are the uh, only um, one who's integrated in Uber in UK for, for anything around travel. Yeah. 
Uh, why not Google Maps uh, traveling by public transport? Um, um, yeah, I'm not sure Google is here. Uh, you think it's Google's business to have sales representative to go around with 1,000 um, ground transportation uh, bus providers, Marin bus, whatever you can imagine. No, they don't. That's not their business. No, they have a. That's a tech company. So the whole sales business is not there. We do the sales part, and uh, we have the biggest inventory. So probably more realistic would be that we deliver something um, um, to Google at some point. You know? Uh, okay, uh, that was for the questions. Uh, thank you very much. Is there maybe any more question from the audience? First time, second time? No? Thank you. Uh, Have fun. See you later. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, give it up uh, for...